Reaper team, good morning. It's around 2.45. It's now May 26th, day after Memorial Day. Team, we are going tuna fishing. I'm so, so excited. We are about to shove off soon. Unfortunately, no good satellite images over the last couple of days, but we got some intel where there were a couple fish caught. Unfortunately, seems like there was definitely a little bit of a hard break and it may or may not still be there, uh, but there's definitely a break for we heard from our buddy boats. A couple fish caught, doesn't sound like anything crazy. So. I'm actually going to start a little south of where they were and kind of work up north. Um, the goal today is a couple bluefin. Uh, hopefully, if we can get two under bluefin, maybe, you know, in short order, um, I got stuff to go sharking because I have a hypothesis there's going to be some pretty big makos out there chasing after these bluefins um, early this season. The water temps on the warm side are around 64 to 66, and that's prime mako water, and it's around 54 to 58 probably on the cold side. So that's what the big ones like. So. Uh, we're getting ready to shove off here. I will see you guys out in the canyons. So stinking pumped. I'll see. So trip one was a tough one. We ran 85 miles, and it was this foggy the entire day. Um, this was actually decent visibility. Uh, it got as low as, man, I could just barely see my pulpit. So we dealt with this from the time we untied the ropes to the time we tied back up at the slip. Um, Slow, right, slow team, trip. Yeah, so real hard break. I mean, it went from 56 to 65, 67 in no time. Really neat. So, you can see it's still really foggy. We got this spread out. So when it's like this, foggy, it's when you gotta know your radar, know your electronics, and be confident in what you're doing. Don't be scared, provided you know, you know your stuff. And, uh, Plug away, just a cigar, a little Macanudo. So we'll see guys, hopefully we can uh, get some fish here. We did hear just a couple small blue fins caught, nothing big. Um, I am uh, 90 miles from land, not even a half a mile of visibility, and I feel like I'm home. This is awesome. This feels so good to be in this fly bridge with a tuna spread behind me. This just feels awesome. Feels great. My trip's made. We get some fish, that's icing on the cake, baby. Now the cold, the cold side is pretty much right here. So now I'm gonna zigzag, warm the cold, warm the cold, until I find out where they're holding. Yeah, it's 10 after 10, we're on. Don't think it's anything big, probably a small bluefin or a falsy or something. But uh, yeah, at least there's some life. So let's see what we got. But uh, yeah, at least there's some life. Let's see what we got. You had to see it coming with the wheels. You got 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 the First tuna of the 2020 season. Nice. Found some life, okay. That's Mako candy, team. So now that I've found some life, so what's happening, as I push south, the warmer water is actually pushing further west up onto the shelf. So that's good. So now I'm combining, you know, a temperature break and a clarity break with bottom structure and bottom current. So that that's, that's key. That's probably why we got that fish. So now I finally found some life. Now we'll start pounding this area. Awesome, it's a fish. So this just was not our day on the Tudor front. Our buddy boat had about 15 bluefin, um, and he was literally within a half a mile of us uh, for quite a bit of time. Uh, he didn't have any size to him. I believe they were probably about the same size as you saw right there. That's a tiny little micro bluefin. So um, with all those small, you know, little tunas around, I really thought that there might be a decent sized mako swimming around. So. Uh, we pulled in the trolling lines and, um, you know, went to the second goal of, of maybe putting a mako in the boat. So let's uh, jump to some shark in action. 
So what are we doing now, Mikey? A little shark fishing. A little shark fishing. We're shark, gonna... make it, make it. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna try and get Mike his first shark. Guys, the tuna grounds, man. We just we just couldn't get it going. Um, no one around us really had anything good. So um, we're just thinking maybe midday, change it up. There's been small blue fins around, small yellow fins, and that's mako candy. So we're gonna eat lunch, relax, do a little sharking, and uh, we'll probably get back on the troll later on in the afternoon. Um, but hopefully in the meantime, we'll get a big mako. So. We'll see, man. The hopes are high. We're just going to uh, chill out. Zach, he's setting the lines now. I got this one weighted down 100 foot with a whole bluefish butterfly. That one should be down about 60 to 80. Super foam. All right, guys. So we've been sharking only about maybe 20 minutes with the lines out, and uh, we're tight. So our deep bait got bit. Zach, you saw the float go down. So key thing with these sharks is get the boat in gear. Clear the lines, get the heck away from them. That's the key thing. So we'll see, we start seeing characteristics of a Mako, real fast runs or a, you know, almost like a tuna tail beat. We'll, we'll start getting the harpoon ready. It, it could just be a blue dog, but you know, we'll see. You wanna get that boat in gear and just fight it like it is a Mako. I've, I've had them, them and Threshers just wake right up. Um, I don't think there'd be Threshers out here, but yeah, I've seen Makos just wake right up when they realize that something's wrong. Brown shark. He's a footer. I think that's the biggest blue shark I've ever seen. <laughs> Pretty cool. So this was Mike the Mortician's very first shark. And uh, yeah, it was a stud blue shark. I mean, you don't usually associate blue shark with the word stud, but I've caught a lot of them in my day. This was one of the biggest I had ever seen. So really neat. He was so pumped we were going sharking. Um, he's never seen one up, uh, you know, that up close and personal live. So uh, it was really neat for him to be super pumped on it you know i've just seen uh, i don't know hundreds of them throughout my years but uh yeah really cool Right there, Zach. Oh, yeah, he's good. He's right there. Yeah, he's right in the mouth. You got him right in the jaw. Okay. Yeah. I'll hold it until I can go. No, don't go. Get that boat feather. Should I put that on hold it? Sure. Get that boat around the I do. So you can see the. It's tough. You don't really see the hook all that great, but you know it was actually right through his lower jaw. So he was not gut hooked. So you can see we got the bolt cutters out. We were doing our best to try and. 
um, you know, actually cut the hook so we don't leave it in. Uh, but this guy was, uh, the video doesn't do it justice. This thing was every bit of seven foot and change. So we ended up just cutting the line. The hook will rust out and that fish will do just fine. So nice, safe release. Um, you can see Zach playing around with them there. They, they can, uh, they're fun. <laughs> Not worth a finger. Good job, brother. Nice job. Yeah, yeah, you don't want that. That was a big fish. So, uh, just a big old dopey blue dog. The guys had a little fun with him down there. So, it's pretty cool. It's something. We'll take it. A little action. It's practice. Every time you practice. No, come on back. Oh, of course I go here, he comes there. Oh, here he is. Does he have a little bit more? Yeah, well, you don't see that on shark. Watch out leader, Mike. What is it, a shell? Come here, dopey. Yo, dopey. Hey, dope. <laughs> I almost got him. Now he's gonna go up there. Oh yeah. Oh. I'll miss it. There he comes. Let's get that goat pole, yeah. Here he comes. There he goes. There he comes. Look at him. Ha. Hey, dopey. Hey, dopey. Where's the boat? He can't hear me. Oh, you got almost got him, Zachy. Oh. Hey, handsome. Oh, let's hit the boat. It's cool. Yeah. Oh, he, ran. oh, he took a little snap at the boat. Sorry. Mikey's bumped. Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. Look at, on, look at him, he just barely noticed it. Yeah. Come on, man. Boom. That was old. <laughs> nope. I love them. They are cool, man. They're so, they're so cool. They're just so chill. Yep. Let's go check that out now. Oh, he got a hold of it there. He got a hold of it on that one. Hey, fella. And there's a boat. Here he comes. Hey, fella. A couple more guys in the fleet and it's just dead. I think it's the moon. They had them good here Saturday, but I think they're just off today. So play around with these sharks and see. Come up with a game plan. Oh, look at it, look at the door out of the water. That's cool. Alright, we got Craig on line here.
Not too sure what happened right there, team. I'll have to check with Captain Zach, but I do believe that's a rig that he made up. And that looks like a pulled crimp, so I don't know. Him and I are going to have to have a little sit down and uh, review the footage. You don't see uh, Captain Chris's rigs doing that, so we'll see. Alright, that was it team. No more tuna. Uh, it was slow for the whole fleet. It was slow for our buddy boat for the most part aside from small bluefin. We didn't get our Mako. We had to leave the area. There were just too many blue sharks. I don't like hurting them. So slow start to the 2020 season. I'll see you guys in the next video and we'll see how we made out on trip number two. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, ding that silly bell. I'll see you guys.